Before the arrival of the British, Oman had been ruled by the Imamate of Oman, and the region had been isolated from the rest of the Islamic world for centuries. For a long time, Oman had been a place of refuge for people who had suffered at the hands of tyrants such as Hajjaj bin Yusuf. After the Ibadi revolt against the Umayyad dynasty in 748, thousands of people migrated to the sparsely populated region which is now known as Oman, and an imamate was established in which leaders were elected by the people. This would be the system by which Oman was governed for hundreds of years. This ancient system of rule changed when the British arrived in the region. The British interest in Oman began in the context of inter-imperialist rivalry. During the French Revolutionary Wars, Britain succeeded in pressurizing Sayyid Sultan bin Ahmed to sign a treaty in 1798. This was the first Anglo-Arab agreement in modern history. In this treaty, the British promised to help the Sultan defeat his enemies and conquer all of Oman, on the condition that the Sultan relied only on British support and did not work with the French. It was not long before large-scale military cooperation began when Sultan Said gathered his troops in support of the British. The British helped Said bin Sultan defeat all of his enemies and strengthen his rule in Oman. The British helped Said defeat the Khawasim tribe and the Bani Bu Ali tribe. This was the first time in Omani history that a ruler came to power because of foreign imperial backing. Now the political dynamics of Oman were completely transformed. However, the British faced many rebellions from the Omani leaders of the Imamate and from various different tribal chiefs. From the 1840s until 1868, leaders from the Imamate of Oman led a series of rebellions against the British-backed sultans. However, in 1871, the Imamate was eventually overthrown and destroyed by the British-backed sultan Turki bin Said. Now the British had full control of Oman as they controlled both the strategic coastal areas and the oil-rich interior. Besides resistance from Omani Imams, there were occasional attempts at independence by British-backed sultans. However, such challenges to the British were faced with severe punishment. For example, Sultan Faisal bin Turki planned to reduce his dependence on Britain and he therefore granted a lease allowing for the establishment of a French coaling station on Muscat territory. In response to this, the British threatened the Sultan with the destruction of his palace and armed forces if he did not change course. Therefore, the Sultan reversed his decision. This was humiliating for the Sultan as it showed that he had to be a British puppet in order to stay in power. However, a more serious threat to British rule in Oman came when Imam Salim al-Kharusi 
attempted to revive the Imamate of Oman in 1913. In May 1913, Al Kharusi was elected as the Imam of Oman. This was the first time an Imam had been elected since 1868, and it was expected that the restored Imamate would take over Muscat and effectively destroy the Sultanate. To prevent this from happening, British army troops were sent to Muscat. It was not long before the British army defeated the forces of the Imamate in 1915. However, even after this defeat, the people of Oman continued electing new Imams and the tribes of the interior continued to resist British oil drilling expeditions in their lands. Violent clashes between Omani tribes and the British-run Oman Petroleum Company continued throughout the early 1900s, and many people were killed on both sides. However, eventually, under the reign of Imam Muhammad al-Khalili, an agreement was signed between him and the British in which the Imamate of Oman would regain some of its lost territory in the interior. This helped ease tensions between the British-backed sultans and the Imamate. However, war between the two sides broke out once again after the death of Imam Muhammad al-Khalili in 3rd May 1954. Sultan Sayyid bin Taymur and the British saw the death of the Imam as a chance and an opportunity for further expansion. The small territories controlled by the Imamate were too rich in oil for the British to avoid. Soon after his death, the British-backed Sultan broke the agreement and began invading Imamate territory. However, this was met with great resistance from the newly elected Imam Ghalib al-Hinayi, who immediately began to incite tribes to rebel. Ghalib al-Hinayi managed to gain the support of many tribal leaders, including many leaders in the British-occupied areas such as Sharjah. Sheikhs loyal to the Sultan were forced to flee to the areas under British protection. Despite the support of many tribes, Imam Ghalib al-Hinayi realized that external support was needed to defeat the powerful British-backed Sultanate. Therefore, Imam Ghalib al-Hinayi, with the help of his brother Talib, established relations with other Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Iraq and initiated an outward-looking foreign policy. Now the Imamate was stronger than ever before and was a serious threat to the British-backed Sultanate. In order to help the Sultan crush the rebellion, the British provided air support, arms and equipment to the Sultan. By October 1955, after a bloody war, the Imamate territories were fully taken over. Faced with a force he could not match, the last Imam of Oman, Imam Ghalib, left Oman on the night of 14th December 1955 and fled to Saudi Arabia. This marked the end of the 1,200-year-old Imamate of Oman and the beginning of a new western-backed Sultanate which still rules Oman to this day.